Like, this is how it starts, like. Hey! Hello. How you doing? All right, Melly. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. How's our ankle? It's perfect, but I also injured my back afterwards. So it's going pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. What did you do to your back? Um, I was just doing a front lever and uh, like uh, the muscle um, like strength or something. So, yeah. Every person we're chatting to is like picking up an injury. Like we were talking to Black Lion last week and he was like, wrecked his back and like had to get Goku to walk him <laughs> like he was paralyzed he said or something <laughs> <laughs> maybe we train at the moment I don't know what's going on and uh, you guys are still kind of able to train a little bit at the minute aren't you inside and stuff yeah we have some gyms that we can train uh, which is good because otherwise it's been raining a lot so we shouldn't be able to train outside um, so yeah it's pretty nice that we can train actually and who, because you, what's the name of the gym you've, you've been in? I've seen, I can't remember the names of the book. There's a few that we can train in. Okay. Yeah, we're not even allowed to train outside at the minute. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Damn. Like, we who can't say. Uh, you want, oh, okay, wait, I see another one. Uh, Aaron, let's go. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see him now. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't see you. Just seeing Jamie. <laughs> yeah we can't even try and with like more than one person at the minute mm. damn that's shit man that's, yeah it, like I see in, in, like... <laughs> how's that is it bloody Ireland <laughs> <laughs> yeah well I think we've been in like a longer lockdown than like any other country like so we're just like yeah, it's just it's just a nightmare. But um, yeah, like, you seem to be able to try like Benima, and there's a few of you guys able to try and together at the minute, isn't there? Mm. Yeah. I I keep forget. I'm gonna have to like slow down talking. So I always forget how fast we uh, talk when we're talking to you. Yeah, yeah. You're not understanding it. I'd also slow down because otherwise I can understand anything. <laughs> <laughs> They're putting subtitles on all these, like. <laughs> Yeah, we need the subtitles. How has a uh, how has lockdown been for you anyway? Uh yeah, it's been shit, man. Like sometimes I'm thinking, what what's going on? You, I have nothing to do. I don't have work at the moment. Um, so what I'm doing is just training, uh, doing some projects with the uh, with brands, but that's it, you know. So like, yeah, it's fucked up. Did he have any idea in Holland, like when um, your lockdown will kind of come to an end? Mm, no, they say that they're gonna continue until June for sure, and I'm almost almost sure that it's gonna take the whole year again. You know, I don't see how it's gonna end, or they wanna do all the vaccinations, but there's a lot of problems also here with vaccinations, so. I don't know, man. And I, even after being vaccinated, they say like that it's still a chance that you can get sick. So why are you vaccinated in the first place? You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm just like, oh, what's going on, man? You you used to have a lot more outdoor parks than us. Though, don't like you guys have still been able to try and outside and stuff. Yeah, and now it's coming, so that's perfect. You know. This Tuesday, we're going to train outside and it's going to be like uh, 21 degrees Celsius, which is really nice. So, oh. yes, I'm very dream, happy. Like, uh, it's like four degrees here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Four degrees. And then, yeah, just hearing you saying you're going to go try and whip people, like, that's just like, feels like a, a dreamland at the minute, like. Yeah, I can imagine. Even with the gym and everything, of course, you have to close up. But there's a lot of like people in Holland at the minute making like some still seem to be making a lot of progress. Like I was because the gyms are open, but um like the likes of Venema and Hendry and stuff, they're after progressing loads in the last year, aren't they? Mm, yeah, yeah, because they've been training also a lot. So yeah, that's good. Yeah. And, like with the fact that you guys have a lot of outdoor parks, you know, like I think Holland has like probably the best parks in Europe anyway. They are Russia. 
Yeah, I think because uh, Barmania is a Dutch brand, you know. So we are building parks in almost every city, I think. <laughs> I think there's yeah. more like, there was around like, I'm not sure, but I think like 270 or something. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Everywhere in <Yeah>. Romania. <laughs> we just have like old people cycling bikes, like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With no purpose, like. We were meant to get one well two built at the start of the year and then obviously COVID has stopped it but we were like showing them uh the remember the bar squad i don't know where that's in amsterdam isn't it yeah we were showing them a lot of the parks in holland and we were just like this is what's happening in holland and you know england and stuff and um just trying to show them like what what could actually go in like and you know mm. Just what could actually happen? Do you think even um, do they like outdoor competitions or anything might happen now? Mm, I don't know. I haven't been focusing on competing or like competitions at all, so I don't know what's going on. I don't feel like there's any competition going on because like most of them they are planning it and then they have to cancel it again. So it's yeah. like yeah, it's hard. And then why would you organize a event now? I think. It's even going to be a problem if you're going to organize events outside now because there's going to be too much people in the one place, you know. Yeah, not, nothing um, like last year, you know, obviously, as you say, you could try and organize it and then it's cancelled and you've put in a lot of time and effort and then it, there's no guarantee it's going to go ahead at the minute. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It doesn't make sense. I think also the World Championship, they didn't even bother of organizing a new World Championship this year. I don't think so. Not that I, oh yeah, I've seen they put up like once or twice saying, oh, if you're looking to host or stage an event, contact us. But nobody, nobody can plan anything at the minute. Like, yeah, yeah. Do, which you is miss, not... uh, do you miss trying to prepare for competitions and do you miss that side of training? Actually, no. <laughs> <laughs> because to be honest, after the world championships, like last time I was thinking, like, what am I going to do? Because, um, Am I going to continue competing all the time, you know? Um, and I didn't really know. So after that uh, was, of course, the COVID. And then I was thinking, you know what? Maybe it's just nice to train and make videos and everything. Like the competition uh, training, it's the most boring training, in my opinion, because you only have to repeat everything over and over. And the trainings that we're doing right now, we can just try new moves and there's no pressure. And it's so much more fun for me. There's no stress behind it, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, once you've kind of finished a comp, like we'd be the same when you finish the competition, it's that release of like not having to perfect something and you can just try something new for a while. Or, yeah, um, My we used to, I know it's a smaller thing, but even with the kids, like when we'd be training them, you'd see them like you know, a few weeks for competition, just focusing on maybe four or five moves, and then when it's over, it's just like that release of pressure, no pressure, and then they're just like wasn't to be flying on the bar again yeah yeah exactly it's it's fun but there's like yeah pros and cons i think about doing competitions yeah i think when like someone like you who's kind of won everything you need to win as well there's not as much of a motivation if you've kind of got to the top you know that way exactly that's what what i always say like i had the the goal to be world champion and i did it two times and after the first time I was already like okay so this was my goal what I'm gonna do now you know and then I was like okay you know what I'm just gonna try to win it again and then because I have the problem with my injury and the, the year after in 2018 I didn't do really well uh, I got really motivated because I was like okay now I really made a mistake and now I want to win it again so I did that and then it's like so, okay, what am I going to do now? Am I going to do another bad year so I can get motivated again? Like, does yeah. it make... I don't know. Do you think that'll be the same now compared to two years ago, like, competition-wise? Because, like, I know a lot of girls have gotten, like, ridiculously good over the past year or two. Do you think if yeah. you went again now, it would, like, be as easy for you to do? Or do you think it'd be a lot more quite competitive? Yeah, no, it wouldn't be easy. But I think it has never been easy, you know? Yeah, fair enough, yeah. But, yeah, it's, I think every year is going to be harder because the level's going up every single year. So, yeah, I think it's going to be harder. Do you think um, maybe the fact that you haven't had a competition to try for the last while, that if one came back, it might be new motivation? Like, 
Mm, I don't know. For the moment, I don't feel like like it, but it can be. You know, I always tell myself like maybe you don't feel like competing now because there's nothing going on, and maybe after a while when the comp competition is coming back, you feel like uh, you want to compete again. Uh, because I always wanted to compete at FIBO in Germany and somehow I could never compete because two times I was injured and then the last time got cancelled. So there is a possibility that I'm going to be like, okay, you know what, I'm going to compete in that competition. But like, I don't know, I can't, I can't tell. Um, and who, um, who do you think aside from yourself, like who do you, who kind of in female kind of, or who stands out to you at the minute? Like who's impressed you the most the last while? Like I think the uh, the best in the in the world for me is now Savina from Brazil um, because she's been throwing out some crazy combinations and she has like uh, the Dragon 720 and everything I've like seen that. That, that many girls have. Um, so yeah, I really like her style and I think she's doing really good at the moment. She stands out for me. Yeah, I see in that Dragon 720, I couldn't even do a walk and I was trying to walk and I'm like, what? what are you doing? Like, <laughs> yeah. It's but just for like, so if you go back a bit, so what, um, like, what was your background? Like, how did you find calisthenics? Or how did you get involved? Um, I was in uh, gymnastics for 11 years. Uh, after I quit gymnastics, I went into fitness, but I don't really like fitness because it's for me it's very boring. Um, so in the gym there was a class doing calisthenics, just reps, and uh, I was joining the class and I, I enjoyed it, but not as as much as I like the freestyle. Um, but I didn't know about the freestyle. So like half year later, I found out that there was a competition going on in the place where I work. So I went there to to see the competition, and then I found out that there was a freestyle part, you know. So yeah, I was just rolling into the the competition and or like into the sport, and then a month later there was the first world championship, and I joined. And I I didn't have any backgrounds in freestyle, you know. I was just like, okay, you know what, I'm just join this. So watching back at the video that I was doing this world championship, I'm just thinking to myself, what am I doing here? You know, it doesn't make sense. My craziest hold was like a one arm L sit or something. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. I had yeah, one arm L sit. Yeah, it's still impressive. Right? <laughs> <That's> move, like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, hang on. Oh, they went on the floor. Yeah, I thought you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah no. So it was uh, really basic, but it's nice to see the, the sport progress, you know, since then. Yeah. Um, the level got so high and also in the guys, like everywhere, it's like it's, it's been really growing. So I can't wait to see the sport in like 10 years or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I think the one yeah, thing, like the, the gymnastics bans some of the scarier moves. I don't think calisthenics ever will. Yeah, I but don't I know. I think get to the point where like someone's just doing some absolutely crazy stuff. Like, Yeah, I think now everybody's like, uh, if I'm talking about the guys, a lot of them already doing 720s and 900s. So I'm just waiting for the first or 1080 or something that's coming, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the last time we were talking to like Jay, and as you said, like in like the female stuff each year, the standard just keeps going up. Like, and um, that would be the interesting thing, as you say, where does it kind of plateau, you know? Because probably only three or four years ago, like, now a, a 360 would have been impressive and you know yeah. like then it just as you say it keeps getting higher um and it, like statics and all like every, like even the statics and stuff like the looks as oil like when you see what statics is like that just keeps improving all the time as well like yeah so. but that should end because it's like they're doing a planche on two fingers now like there's there's you can do it on like only one <laughs> <laughs> And where do you like where do you see do you think we're close to getting to that kind of you know like each sport kind of gets to a point where okay this is like elite level but for calisthenics elite level keeps going up each year do you think we're close to getting to that plateaued level or no i think we have uh, much more like um to grow to be honest because if you compare it to gymnastics we still we are still like progressing from a very low uh uh, but it's getting better and better so like in my opinion a 360 is very basic move you know um but it was really uh, impressive in the beginning but now like i said like you have the 720 
which is already harder. But I think we're going to 2080, like moves like that is going to be the future, you know, like and then maybe in combination. So it's going to just be like catch, catch, plunge, push up. I think that's what we're going to see in the in the future. You said there you're back with, with gymnastics. Like, how would you, how would you, because obviously you have experience in both. So, how would you compare or, you know, for anyone who doesn't understand, try to explain the difference of both? Uh, uh, yeah, in gymnastics, it's very strict because you need to have pointed toes, everything needs to be perfect. Um, uh, with just a little bit of a mistake, you get a reduction on your points. Um, and also, you have like a, a book of rules which you have to make your like your like your choreo with so they say you have to do eight elements um this and this uh, combination gives you some this point so it's like it's like a big puzzle that you need to solve and then you can choose the elements that you like to do and that you can put it into your uh, routine um besides to calisthenics which is very free that you can just choose whatever you want to do and you don't really have to take care of how it looks like of course it's nice if it's flowy if it's like nice form especially with the aesthetics um but it doesn't make sense if you're or it doesn't um, matter if your legs aren't straight or yeah like that so that i think that's the biggest difference do you think um because there's a lot of talk about like trying to get calisthenics as an olympic sport do you think that would suit the actual sport because if it goes into that kind of level that kind of like freedom kind of gets reduced because we'd have to put together a card of points like gymnastics so we understand like what a 360 is worth or what a 720 is worth mm -hmm. like do you think that would be good for the sport or do you think it would actually take out the fun of it like yeah i don't know because um in, i don't even know if we can be olympic i think there has to be a lot of changes in the rules because i know the pole sport for example uh, they want to be olympic for a very long time but um, they are not because there's too many uh, gymnastic elements in the sport. So they change that. And so there's like, okay, some moves that we cannot do because they look too much like gymnastics. Um, they, they took it out so that they can be in the Olympics. Um, calisthenics is like 99% gymnastics. So it's like, how are we going to be a Olympic sport if we are actually like a side sport of gymnastics, I feel like, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It can no, happen. No, I, I agree. I think it's more like of an image thing that calisthenics is just cooler than gymnastics. Like it's yeah. more kind of urban. And I, should, I think it should stay that way rather than trying to make it really, what, structured and it just yeah, takes yeah. The, the freedom away from it. Like. Exactly. That's what I say. Uh, just like we have to stay free and we have to stay creative because that's what makes the sport so cool that we, we actually... Uh, come up with moves that nobody did before which is really cool you know you just create things what you can do with your own body who never who uh, nobody did it before so it's it's pretty cool that we created a sport like that i think yeah like if um i don't know if you've seen but like when when parkour and stuff for free running when they tried to kind of get that kind of same recognition like they nearly gymnastics nearly took them over um so there could be that fear that like if, if we tried to go down the route of getting it recognized as an Olympic sport, then we might end up as a, a sister or whatever. You know, we don't end up under gymnastics as opposed to being our own thing, like what they tried to do with parkour. Like, um, so yeah, I, I think they, like, obviously, you know, more than us, but with the WCO, I know that they kind of said they'd rather be seen as like a UFC or something where it's, it's fully, it's its own thing. And, you know, they're not trying to fall under any kind of other organization, I suppose, or anything like that. We just get recognized by ourselves, like. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I, what I like more in our sport is the battle uh, competitions, you know, like uh, fighting or like um, tricking, you know. They, have you seen ever a tricking competition? No. In, like, parkour? Okay. It's so sick. They have a red light and a blue light, and then there's like one guy is coming up and he's doing a uh, a tumble on the floor and then his up um up and end. He was right there, eh? up and end, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then he do it and then the judges are choosing which one was the craziest. And then they do another round. If it's like a tie, they have to do a third round. But it's so sick, you know, like it's more like a battle 
competition and that's what i love and when when you look at world of bar heroes for example and the wco they make also battle competitions and it's for me it's really cool to watch yeah the world of bar heroes had like a really really high production value with their stuff I thought like yeah this they is could have leveled it up again it was very good yeah it's really cool yeah you know that 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 makes more sense than like you know as you say the battle element if you if you go into um you know, the Olympics, and they'd, they'd want all that stuff taken out of it. As you say, like, that was interesting when you said about the pole, that, like, they had to change so many elements to not be seen as gymnastics and then not to to fit into the Olympics, that it almost, it's not their sport anymore, like. Yeah. That's just yeah. what I can't believe it was dinner. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a birthday cake. It's um, just the same. Think- uh, the people say, like, for example, um, what I heard is parkour. They say, oh, it's just gymnastic outside, you know. They also say with calisthenics, like, it's just gymnastic on the stiff bar, you know. But I always say, like, if you look at dancing, there's so many types of dancing, you know. And But they are. Um, but it doesn't, make, it doesn't mean that, for example, like, uh, a ballroom dancing is the same as uh, a country dancing, you know. Um, so that's what I feel like also with uh, with the gymnastic and the calisthenics and the parkour. It's, just, it's a kind of a part of each other, but it's a different sport. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, uh, we, when we get asked that, because obviously when we talk to other sports here in Ireland, you know, they, they don't have a clue what we do. And like you said, they'll say, is it not? They're like, I don't mean to be smart, but is it not just gymnastics? And I kind of say, well, it's like comparing soccer and rugby. You know, there's a lot of guys running on the pitch and, it can be the same, yeah. but they both veer off then in, in their own kind of very different directions when you get into both. But um, do you think your background in gymnastics, obviously, you know, do you think it helped you when you did decide to move into calisthenics? Yeah, for sure, because you um, really learn how to move your body, you know, with gymnastics. And you also have basic strength and you have um just a lot of experience with with your body um, the only thing that for me was very hard is to to do the static movements because like i didn't know any static movements so i have to learn also the back lever and the front lever and everything from scratch so yeah the of course the turning part is it's much easier if you have a background but even the muscle up i i wasn't able to do like a, a good amount of pull-ups so yeah, we trained. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you know, obviously the the elements within gymnastics for girls in particular, obviously, is just you know very different. Obviously, wouldn't it be? Yeah, yeah, it's totally different than the than the calisthenics the movements. Um, what I like because I don't really like to see the gymnastics movement on the bars. Uh, I think we have to have to have a separation because. If we're really gonna do those movements, uh, then it's it's gonna be actually a copy of it, you know. What moves would you categorize as gymnastics? I would see. I, I haven't. I haven't seen anyone that would be like that's a gymnastics move. Just obviously, you have more experience in that field. Like, so what would you see as gymnastics? Yeah, it's hard to explain because there's some um, like um, elements that you do in the bars. Um, it's like a pullover, and then you swing up and then you roll again you know and then yeah. you get your or something like that and there has been competitions that i've seen people doing exactly that and i'm thinking i did that when i was eight years old doing gymnastics you know <laughs> competition in calisthenics like nah yeah i don't know when we we used to go to a gymnastics like club to they obviously let you would let us try in calisthenics but we'd talk to some of the coaches and uh, they'd never they'd never done any like you know rotation on the bar like 360 or you know 440 or whatever and it was just interesting when because as, as me and Aaron said we've never done gymnastics so we didn't know what would be gymnastics or calisthenics you know when we went in and the coach didn't know how to teach rotation you know that kind of way it was just he's like I've never done that and he, he tried to get us on the trampoline and trying to get us to turn on the trampoline and all you know and it was like this is weird like but he could do, you know, they, they would try and teach you different styles. But like you said, even 
if a movement was the similar, the style and the way they would want you to execute it would would be very different. Like, yeah, but I think if you are a good good coach, you can like look at the move and then understand a bit like how your body is moving. You know, um, but like uh, I've seen actually a video in like back in the years back in the days that they were doing gymnastic, but it was with the bars still very close to each other. Have you seen that, the bars? The uneven like, bars, is it? Yeah, uneven bars. Um, yeah. But like uh, like when, I think it was like around 1900 or something, like the bars were really close to each other. Now they put them wide, so they have to jump. But back in the years, they have they put it really close to each other. And actually, they're doing a lot of similar moves like calisthenics on the bar. Like they are turning this side also to 60s uh, and some really creative move. It's pretty cool to uh, watch and to get inspiration, for example, for that, for, uh, for a move. Yeah, I think I've seen some of it on the... Um... Wow, it's gone out of me. I was still like the circus thing where they swing and then grab each other and all. Trapeze. Yeah, it was mm. like trapeze kind of stuff as well. Like, no, no, no. It's just a, like a, it was just a normal bar. So I will send it to you if I see it. Okay. It's just yeah, like yeah. uneven, but they're really close, and they just like I, I think I've seen it. Like they pop off and like just slap their hips off it and do a mask yeah. Thing and, yeah. Very different style than they do now, but it looks really, really cool and creative as well. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's just as mad, you know. And we haven't had anyone on that. Like, like we usually, if we're talking to somebody, we're just criticizing gymnastics for twenty minutes. But we've never had someone that's actually from gymnastics on, you know. So just to get the kind of comparison. Um, but then obviously for for you, like, this is something we were interested in. Is that like, do you think there's a difference for like a a female or a girl trying to get involved compared to you know something we hadn't thought of but if you were a girl is it more difficult or anything like that to get involved with calisthenics um it actually really depends i think uh, if you have a background it's going to be easier of course um because uh if you don't have a lot of strength it's going to be harder and i always say like of course for girls it's going to be harder to gain strength you know it's just uh, the genes and um, so, like, I think every girl can do it, though, but you just have to know how to learn it. Because if you're going to not focus on the basics first and you don't have really have strength, then freestyle is going to be hard as well. Because if you cannot pull yourself up, you, there's no way you can do a pull over, you know. So, yeah, I think for the people that want to start with calisthenic uh, and they are... Um, very beginner I would always recommend them to do the basic first just make sure that you can pull up push up dip and core training and stuff like that before you even thinking about freestyling do you think that like for women like there's you know there's certain areas that you would be like much higher and much more you know like balance for example women generally have better balance than men or do you think there's certain areas that you would be like way higher than than guys like I think females um, move like better. I don't know the they look more glorious or something. <laughs> oh, how is that word? Like they look. It looks nicer on the bar. They look more flowy. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I, but also with gymnastics, they look. It's like somehow gracious. That's the word I was looking for. They they move more gracious. I think. Yeah, yeah, like, and you know, women kind of have better ability for coordination and stuff as well. Like, um, and then you know, obviously, they're more flexible than us as well. So, like, if you if you compared a male or a female competition, you know, stuff that females would do, even like a much smaller scale, but us with our kids, if we got the girls and boys against each other, and girls started doing bridge and splits and things like this the boys wouldn't come close to them. Yeah. Um, so do you yeah, notice things like that in competition? You know, there'd be differences what females would do compared to males and stuff. Yeah, 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 exactly. But I don't know if, like, I wouldn't feel that splits and bridges are really uh, calisthenics movements, you know. It looks cool, um, but I don't know, like, yeah. It's hard because there's also the back lever and splits, which looks really cool, but it doesn't require any strength. It's just requiring uh, flexibility. Um, so yeah, it's hard to, if it's like, do you count that as a strength move then? Or like, yeah, I don't know. 
Yeah, I think people like the look of the straddle planche more than a full planche, but a full planche is like a thousand times higher than a straddle. <laughs> exactly. And also the, the split planches that you can see a lot of girls doing, it's nothing more than a tucked planche, you know? Yeah. So it's like, it looks really cool because the legs are in splits. Um, but it's like, yeah, it's like, I think it's like an advanced tuck planche, but still, you know, it's, it's not very hard. Um, so the girls that are flexible, they have a lot of... Um, Oh, my English is very bad this evening. <laughs> <laughs> they have a lot of, um, oh my God, how do you say that? Uh, advantage. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, <laughs> they, oh, in, in particular move. So I think that's going to be exactly for the girls uh, easier than for the guys. Yeah, Was that you your... know, like when, <laughs> when you came over to do a, the workshop with us, you know, um, and the kids and stuff, you showed us the eagle and things like that. And, you know, that was something we hadn't done before. But, like, every boy say that we would do that, which would be, like, in agony, having to <laughs> rotate the show, like, ah, so sore, so sore. But every girl, no problem, you know, they stay yeah. here all day. And, and <laughs> they, they would pick them kind of movements up a lot quicker, like, um, because they obviously have better you know, even just the mobility and flexibility in their shoulders that boys would, besides one or two of our boys, but most of the girls would have that advantage, like. Yeah, maybe that's because they're already playing on the playing ground when they were younger, you know, they were already on uh, on the bars when they were younger. Um, I don't know if, if, like, if you have a guy and a girl on the same age, starting in the same moment, if there going to be, a like, a difference in flexibility in the shoulders when they are young. I'm not sure could be yeah we can only base it off i suppose the, the kids that we've worked with that it would be much more common for a boy to be in pain with that i've never seen a girl be like i can't do that um, yeah or if we put like you know if we put the girl i know you said it's not kind of maybe calisthenics but if we put the girls on the floor and they were asked to do like bridge or kick over or even pistol squats you know girls are much better at getting to the bottom of the floor of a pistol squat than a boy and stuff. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, just I didn't know. It was interesting in seeing if, like, you noticed there were certain things girls would have an advantage of over boys because usually we only talk about uh, men are stronger, but there's a lot more, you know, areas of fitness where girls are ahead of us, like. We are much cooler. <laughs> 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 No, I'm kidding. I don't know. Uh, it could be that the girls uh, just born with more flexible uh, joints, but I don't know. We have to. We have to ask a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What What do you see? Like when you were watching a male or a female competition, then what do you see as like maybe the bigger biggest differences? It really depends on the level, I think, because if you look at the top level, um, I think both categories look really cool, you know, um, because especially on the top level, the styles of the girls, it's uh, it's really uh, different than the guys. They have different styles, but the level is very high as well. So um, in my opinion, if you look at the guy and the girl competition, then it, it's really cool to look at both. Um, if you're going on a lower level, sometimes the the differences are getting really big. Uh, and I find that sad because uh, most people thinking then like, oh, the girls, you know, they are just doing basic stuff and uh, we don't like to see this. Uh, I would love to see the sports grow as big that we have so many girls that even in the like the lower level, the girls are still on a good level and they're really coming up with the guys, you know. Um, so yeah, hopefully in the future we have uh, something like that. Yeah, look, I, that's what I mean. That's why I'm interested in um, kind of seeing like maybe, you know, as I said, if there's different kind of things girls are stronger in, you know, like maybe handstands and things like that. If you can kind of guide them down things like that. But then like like you and Venema, like like I don't, obviously I don't really know Venema too long but like the stuff she's doing now is just is crazy like oh. you can obviously uh Venema is it or oh Carmen <laughs> oh you keep calling yeah I keep getting her yeah. Instagram name oh, it's her <laughs> yeah it's her but you, you could obviously you know compete with 
with the guys as well, you know. Yeah, it's but the... we we are like um lacking on strength if I think about the guys they like most guys are they can do planches and they can do front levers easily, you know. Um for females it's just a lot harder to have these kind of um movements. So yeah, I know some people were saying, like, if a girl's really good, she's joining in with the lads. But I don't think that's fair because it makes her seem like she's a lower level than she actually is. Mm-hmm. Like, if she's if she's that good, she should get first place. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You shouldn't yeah. have to win in another group just because there isn't as many females as there is males. Like. People are just focusing now on there's not too many females. So, um, like, we have... Of course, we have to fix that, you know. I would like to see a future with more females in the sport, but I think we're going to get there. Uh, we have to think about that the sport, it's still quite new, you know. We are growing, uh, and from the beginning, it's been growing a lot, and there's a lot of more people coming into the sport. So we have just have to wait, and there will be more females. I'm, I'm sure about that. And even just since you've started, like, have you seen a, a big growth in the amount of females taking part? Yes, for sure. And what I've seen a lot is that the level of the girls also grow really, really much. And it's like uh, in the beginning, there was just a few girls that were really uh, outstanding. But now there's so many girls. Um, so, yeah, it's it's really growing. And uh, it's cool to to watch from every country, uh, different girls really getting up the level, you know. There's a, there's a girl from Russia, is it? She's only like 15 or something. I can't remember her name, but she was in the world championships, I think, when you were there, was she? Natalia, uh, is it? Yeah, Natalia or something. She's only like 15 or something, or 16, maybe. She's from Poland. Poland? Yeah. I should have, should, have, should have looked that up before I asked you about it. But, uh, you have with the red hair. She's from Russia. And Natalia is from Poland, yeah, with the yeah. blonde. She was a world champion in 2000, I think, mm-hmm. 18. Yeah, she won the Royal Bears competition. I was at that you were judging. She won that one. Yeah. And is that who I like? The, yeah, like they're only like one of them's only what 15, 16, and then the other is I don't know what, what age was that other one you're talking I, about, Ireland? I think Italian's like 19, is she? She's older. Yeah, so it's like still, like, yeah, the, you know, that just shows there's like huge potential there if they're only that age. and um, For sure. Also, there's uh, one girl from Bulgaria, and she's uh, she's 15. Yeah, actually. Jesus Christ. She's so good. Oh, my I God. Love she's like the six five forties in a row and all. Like. I know. Yeah, she What's the story? Really- that gym is ridiculous. Like, the amount of people training in that gym that are just disgusting. Like, I don't know what they're using there, but I want yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Kamenov started training there as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah but this gym is just um, like... Uh, like the Mecca of calisthenics, I feel like. Yeah, you have Neko, Ristov there as well, Daniel, and then... Ristov uh, training there as well, is he? Yeah. The yeah. man who was at the World Cup with us? Yeah. yeah he's nuts. He's, he's, he done gymnastics for like 12 years or something. But I love what I love about his style is that he has been a gymnast, um, but he's not showing so much the gymnast style into the sport, you know? Um, I really like to see that. I tried to do the same as well. I have a lot of people say, telling me like, um, oh, I didn't know you were a gymnast. And I always um, pick that up as a compliment because I try to not show any gymnastic in my um, calisthenics movements. Uh, and I feel like uh, Christoph is doing the same. His style is very clean calisthenics, I think. Yeah, his planches are class. Mm. When, yeah. when we met him, at, we met him at the, the World Cup and someone asked him like oh how long are you training and he was like oh i'm only training like a year Six and a months. half <laughs> yeah yeah we're like what and he, he didn't tell anyone that he'd done gymnastics he didn't want anyone to know that he'd done gymnastics and then like, yeah. and like honestly like what what did you do before it and then he just took a vision i uh, done gymnastics for like 10 years <laughs> he, he did like yeah. four joints into like a handstand into planche and then back up the handstand you're like no <laughs> you're yeah, training it- six months like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's sick. No, that's impossible. But I think the that's the thing what you see right now is that most people that are joining the higher, um, like the levels, they either train in calisthenics for a long time 
or they have a background in something. Yeah. Yeah. Especially, like the... yeah. Especially like the likes of, you know, when they're they're coming in, maybe like, you know, like Jay had said this to me a while ago. He's like, you know, a couple of years ago, you might have been able to start the sport late early twenties and still go and do well. Now they're all obviously starting younger and like Haristov and Daniel, like they're on all only like nine like Goku as well, you know, like they're all only like nineteen and twenty and yeah. You know, like, and I've seen also some kind of kids already, you know, like um, I saw like some some girl doing a one arm front lever and she's like nine years old or something, you know. Wow. <laughs> Imagine that right, <laughs> in the, like 10 years. What is she doing? So, like, yeah. And there's also some kids uh, that are doing crazy freestyle. So, yeah, if they're going to that's also what's going to happen in the future. You guys also have some. Uh, really cool kids already on the bars you know so i think the kids if they're gonna find out that calisthenics is sport and they're gonna start very early then in the future we have some <laughs> flying on the bars you know yeah i think when when we obviously like when you say with the kids is that our thing is kind of look like aaron just said it's cooler than gymnastics like when we show the kids you know we're not wearing leotards like we're just going in and you know, we just we just look like them, and then it for boys as well. You you know, boys might have been put off not wanting to do gymnastics, but then they see our sport and it's cooler. And yeah, I think kids and stuff like that. It will in the next couple of years. That's what they're all gonna want to be doing. Like, yeah, I think that too. I think the cool thing about calisthenics is that you can do it everywhere, um, especially if you have a lot of parks outside. Um, but like, it's much more creative. I always feel like gymnastic, like, I don't really don't like gymnastic because it's a really cool sport and they are doing some insane moves that we are not even close to. Um, mm. but like, it's too much of a strict sport. You have to, yeah, always, everything has to be perfect and you're never good enough. And I feel like this is also not very good as a child growing up. To have a sport like that you know it's the, it doesn't make, give you a good feeling and the calisthenics is the opposite you know if you do something everybody's cheering and it's going to give you um like a better better feeling about yourself and about what you're doing i think we had think, um, um, sorry, no. sorry we had we had one little girl in with us before and she'd done gymnastics for like six years and she did a backflip or back tuck in gymnastics and then Aaron just you know like you say cheered oh brilliant well done and her mom was nearly her mom was nearly crying in the corner because she was like she'd never been told well done before um, you know in gymnastics yeah. they just always focus on a flaw and try and improve you and as you say yeah. you're, not, you're not criticizing gymnastics some people prefer that you know like some people prefer that atmosphere and want to improve mm -hmm. and yeah, like if you brought a top top level gymnast in against a top level calisthenics athlete, like the gymnast would absolutely destroy the calisthenics person. Like, yeah, yeah, like, I think so. It's, it's a different people. level, but it's a different type of dedication to just focus on one thing for yeah. years and train six days a week for like three hours. Like, you have to yeah. be impressed by that as well. Like, yeah, they train a lot, and they are starting like from three years old, and then when they grow up, they start even training like uh, six hours a day, three hours in the morning, three hours in the afternoon. And it's like uh, in the in a full week, and the, the top athletes that train like 32 hours or something. Like, it's insane. Hey, what's your man's name up in Belfast? He trains in the national sports campus here. Ali knows him. Oh, what's his yeah. name? Reese, is it? Yeah, Reese. yeah. But he, he lives in the National Aquatic Center, like, he just lives on the sports campus. Mm. He just trains all day, like. Yeah, it's sick. That's so. Um, when I done their, mm. I done their coaching courses, like the Irish fairs, and and we were working with some of the kids that they hoped were, well, twenty twenty never happened, but this was back in like twenty fourteen or something, and these were the kids that were going to go to the or hopefully get to the twenty twenty Olympics, and um, yeah, that's what they said. They were like, yeah, we try and three hours four hours every evening we're here saturday then for four or five hours and sunday was their day off but they were in the gym six days of the week and uh there was me like i'd only started calisthenics and i was challenging them and 
they wanted to just kick like a little eight year old. I tried to spot her for a flip and she just kicked me in the head and all because I couldn't spot her or anything. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, what I was doing. I was, I was like trying to challenge her to a frog stand and all like, she's like yeah of course I can do frog stand like she's doing frog stands up the handstand like all day she just put me back in my box straight away mm. but then um, when it comes to then for competitions like what sorry I'm moving away from that but uh, what what kind of mindset do you have or do you feel you need to have when you are competing to perform well I don't know if I explained that properly or yeah, I need to stay calm, but it's very hard for me. Like, I have this question every interview almost. Um, <laughs> but, like, I really stress before competition. I get really anxi- anxious. And, um, like, it's very hard. Some competition was better, but most of the time I'm just really stressed. And then as soon as I'm on the stage and the music starts, then I start to feel focused. And then I'm as soon as I'm going, I'm just like going you know there's like a tunnel fishing and I'm just doing the things I want to do but like just before the competition I'm so stressed and it's been very hard for me that's also uh, for me a problem that I don't really like to compete because this kind of feeling it's um it doesn't give me a lot of joy I would I would love to just go to a competition um and just feel um happy and to excited to join the competition and not feel like that you know you think because you've won so much like does that give and like that that you're the best like does that give you confidence in a competition or does it give you more pressure because you have to kind of keep to that standard that yeah, everybody thinks you're the best and like and more pressure <laughs> yeah does it give you more pressure or does it make you more relaxed thinking yeah i'm the best i don't need to stress uh, too much more pressure and i think uh it's just because people expect a lot of uh from you but also i feel like I have to um show what I can do you know that just give me a lot of pressure there was one competition in the Netherlands I wasn't supposed to compete but they um, they missed one guy and there was a female competition but they already done everything and then it was like uh, they missed one guy and they asked me to compete you know but I didn't even prepare and as soon as they said like you want to compete I start feeling anxious again and I was like oh my god now I have to compete and um I'm going to compete against the guys, you know, so there was so much pressure and that I didn't do anything. Like, I think even a normal 360 was a fail, you know, but it was just because I've put so much pressure on myself that even the basic things I cannot do, that's, yeah, it's just shit. That's why I love just the training, you know, I don't have the pressure. I, I can just enjoy what I'm doing. And what, um, when you are kind of feeling like that, like, do you have, I don't know what, like, do you have like a coping mechanism? How do you try and handle that, I suppose? I've been doing like a, a lot of mental coaching um, and I'm doing like um, visualization exercises, um, which helps a lot as well. Um, and yeah, I just try to relax myself and it's just very hard, especially uh, at, the, at the day of the competition in the morning, I start feeling nervous. And then uh, when the competition is coming up, then it's getting worse. But I don't know, as soon as I'm on the stage, like I said, I feel good. So it doesn't really affect me uh, all the time because sometimes I can't really focus. Um, but then other competitions, it just works against me. So, yeah, it really depends also, I think, on the day, on my preparation, on everything. Like, yeah. Yeah, like on the, the more, on the day of competitions, like if Aaron, Aaron is with me, like, and uh, I just like, <laughs> he'll try and talk to me and I just don't want to talk to him. I'm just like, fuck off, leave me alone. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's like, like on the opposite, I get, I get really giddy and excited. So like I just want to talk and like Yeah, I wanna be like you. Know, if yeah, it, if you're- no, I, I literally shit my pants in a competition. Like I get nervous, but on the like build up to it, I just like having the crack and not think about it too much. Where Jamie's the opposite, all he's thinking about is the competition. Mm. And like you won't talk at all. <laughs> yeah, I was already nervous with the with gymnastics because I remember that um before I was just competing, you know, of course I was nervous, especially for the beam. Beam was the worst element in gymnastic um, but in the end I, f- I remember I was on the floor and I was like doing my routine and I was I feel like I have to throw up you know during my my routine um, which was really bad because it 
took me off my focus. And in the beginning, when I was doing calisthenics, I had the same. I was uh, at the world championship. I was um, like in in my rounds, standing in front of the people, and I feel like, oh, I have to throw up, you know. So I actually through the years, I I grown a bit, uh, and I learned to deal a bit with the uh, with nerves and with the with the anxiety and everything. But like, yeah, I don't know. It's it's just stressful. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's just, it's interesting when, like, you know, when you hear, like, different people having to have a different response, like, when we've talked to Jay, he's just, or, like, Starboy, like, you know, like, they, the way they put an iron competition, like, Starboy has to, like, be really energetic, or he just won't perform, you know, like, when you watch him in a competition compared to, like, I remember uh, when Goku went against them maybe two years ago, and, like, Goku lost just because it was Starboy in his head, you know? He came mm. up to me and he was just like, oh, I have to go against Starboy, man. But like, because Starboy was so energetic and he's able to get the, the crowd going, it got into like Goku's head, like. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's, you know, as you said, mo- but most people are that, aren't they? Where they're just like, I think a lot of the time with competition, it's not like physically how you prepared, it's how you mentally prepare for the competition, like, and how yeah. you deal with it. Yeah, exactly. And you need to learn how to lose. And that's the hard part, I think, you know, because if especially when you are really um, dedicated to the sport, uh, you always want to be the best. You know, it's just inside of you. And um, if you're not the best, then it's kind of hard to swallow. But I think if you're a good athlete, you need to, to learn how to deal with that feeling. And for me, when I was losing, I feel like um, it gave me motivation to do better. So I always, like, I remember the one in the World Championship 2018, which I really, I really fucked up the competition. I didn't even make it to the finals. And I had, this was really painful for me because it was my year of comeback in my mind, you know, but it was not. <laughs> but like, yeah, this was, a, I had a, like a full day that I was like feeling bad about it. But then I was just like, okay, you know, I can now sit with this problem in my mind and keep thinking like oh I wish I was I did it different but nothing gonna change so I need to just take the best out of it get the motivation and then try again the next time you know well I think that's like a that's a winner's mindset like you and Jamie would t- be very similar like if Jamie lost he'd be very upset about it and like he'd, he'd want to win the next one but you two yeah. have done really well like you've won like the female and Jamie's been the first person to go in Ireland to the World Cup like whereas everybody else in Ireland who'd be like average like me and mm. the lads who train a bar monkey we don't care yeah. if we lose it's just like it was a good day out so yeah, it's a different think, mindset but i think that's why you are so successful because you yeah, want true. to always do better like i think you have to have that mindset yeah but uh you also have to learn how to deal with that mindset because it can give you a lot of problems as well <laughs> i've been in like the hotel and i'm just like why am I here? Like, why am I doing this to myself? Why? Like, what am I doing? Like, <laughs> I don't need yeah. to be here. Like, everyone else at home having a great time. Like, yeah. But then I, when it's over, you just want to go again. Like, the thing with the last competition I did, I was the same. I was like, why am I keep doing this to myself? Like, I don't feel good. I'm feeling like I have to pee every every second. You know, I'm on the toilet. <laughs> yeah. Cannot even so like i'm just really stressful why am i doing that and then you are competing and i love being on stage that's the weird thing you know as soon as i'm on stage i'm just like oh this is my zone you know i love to entertain people i love to just show uh show off uh, what you learn you know so and then after a competition i was like oh yeah yeah this is why i do it and this is why i love it you know so yeah i don't know but now, because I didn't do a lot of competitions, I'm just, I think I get really anxious because I didn't do a competition for such a long time. So the step of doing a competition again is very hard. Yeah, yeah. And do you think like when, like you said, when you've lost and stuff, you know, would you put it down to like not preparing physically in the build up, or just not dealing with the emotional things on the day and mentally not? Uh, you know mentally on the day compared to just not preparing physically I think it's a combination of both uh, the competitions that I didn't do well um, 
yeah, the preparation wasn't that good. If I really do a good preparation, and mostly it goes uh, combined with the mental preparation, um, because if you if you prepare well, you feel better about it. You know, if you don't if you don't prepare well, then you're just like, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this. You know, so like, yeah, I, it's gonna be a combination. Uh, and the last World Championship, I think I feel like everything was just. Uh, perfect for me I prepared well and mentally I was in a better place um, just the, the stress before the competition was shitty <laughs> um... Have you, I feel like if, as, uh, when I go into a competition I feel like uh, when I think about my routine I feel like oh, I'm scared that I cannot do anything anymore and you've done it like a million times already but I'm even thinking like oh I'm not sure if I can do a, a, a ginger like maybe I'm <laughs> yeah and that's what I mean that's what we think like I think mentally a lot of guys get fucked over rather than just like physically like you say the you know like well I catch might catch a shrimp flip every training session and then on the day of a competition I overthink the shrimp flip and I'm like yeah. nah, I'm not gonna go or like you kick too far and you just even um like we talked to Black Lion Hill like in from England the other week and I thought what he said was interesting was that he he won a competition but he said that he didn't throw any of his big moves in the competition so he was actually disappointed like he said he'd won but his performance wasn't he didn't feel like he won because he yeah, didn't go yeah. for so sometimes people just want to overcome that you know get over that anxiety and that's what they I don't know. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I, was, I thought you switched off. It's like I'm not listening to Jamie anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. My battery said like twenty percent. So. Oh shit. Um. Yeah, just uh, the, mainly that stuff. But um, we only had kind of one one more question for you anyway. Uh, like the community in Holland for us, like you know, we're on the outside and we're just kind of watching, I suppose. How much has that grown since you started? Oh, it's been growing so much because um, I remember the first time I come in uh, competitions or just an event, what was going on. I know everybody, you know, so I was like everybody that was on the event. I was like, it, it was like a reunion of everybody's coming together. Now, if there's an event, which haven't been here for a year now, but <laughs> if there would be an event, it's like, I think I know maybe five or ten percent of the people that's coming and i'm just thinking where did all these people come from you know and sometimes the people don't even know me you know so it's like um they have no clue what's this sport about uh, and but they just come to the event and they just watching the competition or they just started calisthenics which is really cool you know so yeah it's been growing a lot yeah as i say we're kind of on the outside and we kind of always looking oh it's like it's, it's huge in Holland you, you just have that idea because you see all the parks and then so many people that seem to be uh coming out of Holland to compete and are doing well and stuff as well you know yeah it's getting it's getting good we why have do you some... think that is I think it's because of the Barmania like I said like this this is a Dutch brand so that's why we have so many parks um I think also that the Netherlands always care about a lot about sports they always been yeah. um so, like the highest percentage of like active travel in the world yeah also like, and if you look at the um, olympics there's a lot of dutch athletes in the top most of the time especially with ice skating and everything so it's like there's what? just <laughs> yeah really yeah? Know, yeah really they are really good in the olympics so i think it's just uh, the country really cares about sports and movement yeah, you can see it. Like we, uh, as I said, like the, when we went to the last Royal Bars competition that they had, you know, when it's on in the fitness expos and stuff. And as you say, fitness in general seems to be uh, kind of very popular, obviously, over there. And um, even just with Royal Bars, like their events every year have gotten so much bigger. Like, Yeah, it's got really cool. I think these, I love these events. Well, hopefully they, they can come along again at some stage. Can't wait to go to another event. Like, man, I know. Go to a different I, country and just. 
be there, you know, just to have this feeling again. I don't even know how it feels anymore. Melanie, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, thanks for chatting to us. Uh, that was great. And uh, yeah, now it's good to hear from you. And uh, I'm glad that you're doing all right. So you're back in your ankle and hopefully no more injuries for a while. Yeah, let's see. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, and hopefully we'll see you at an event or something soon. And if uh, you can travel again, hopefully we can get you over here at some stage again. For sure. Let's do another workshop if it's going to be possible again. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I... Yeah. Uh, yeah. We were meant to be getting two parks built and hopefully when they allow travel and stuff like that again, we can organize a big event and get yourself and fuel out, get you over and stuff. Let's do it. Would be so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Melanie, Thank thanks you. a lot. And, thanks for uh, talking to us. Stay, uh, stay safe and hopefully we'll see each other soon. Thanks, Melanie. See you soon, Mel. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Ciao. See you later.